gonna look for some mushrooms. I doubt we'll find any, but uh, I'm sure we'll find some ramps. Um, morels have been out for about a week now. You guys have been finding them a lot up in Ohio and uh, down the river at gorge. They're hitting pretty hard. So uh, after the rain, we'll see. There's no guarantees. That's why it's called foraging, not finding. Justin's being uh, gracious enough to teach me some of his master uh, foraging skills here, and I'm hoping to find some goodies today to uh, take into this Save of the Season event, and uh, wrote a kind of ambitious menu uh, for tomorrow, <laughs> so <laughs> whatever goodies we can find. I have some ramp patches that I found, and he just, you know, we're going over the uh, sustainable way to forage them and uh, leave the roots intact, so... Next year we'll be able to make ramp pesto again. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, we're on a friend of mine's farm, Josh Kennewig, um, down by the Licking River. Uh, we've got a nice uh, ridge line that runs down towards the river. So we'll hit the top of this ridge and then we'll kind of drop down into some of the bottoms. Um, it's getting kind of floody down there, but we had a nice rain, so we should be able to find um, a ton of ramps. Um, also going to try to see if we can't scare up any more elves. Um, I did see that a friend of mine just uh, got some oyster mushrooms, so uh, keep your eyes out for anything extremely uh, yellow fluorescent looking on the base of a tree. Um, the morels are, uh, the light ones are really hard to find with a lot of this leaf litter, so you kind of really got to look close. Um, we're out here just trying to get some local goodies for the Gorman Farm event and uh, wish us luck. Basically try to dig down until you start seeing the crown of the plant where it meets the ground and then when it starts to bulb out and you can see the little bulbets down there at the bottom yeah. I like to take my spade and just kind of chop that and slice straight through it and uh, try to leave part of the root crown into the ground and supposedly these will regrow if you find a patch take 10% which 10% of a patch like this is very little, but sustainably harvesting them, leaving that root in the ground and letting them regrow. Um, I don't see any issue with taking 40, 50%. And it takes obviously a little more time to do it this way, but at least we're guaranteed that when we come back next year, yeah. we'll have ramps. And then even if you don't go real deep, and get a part of that bulb, I mean, you still got these beautiful, nice green leaves that can yeah. make a nice ramp puree, pesto, yeah. nice little ramp oil. Um, and then when I'm done, I always like to kind of oh, make oh, it look man. back natural again, yeah. put the leaf litter back down, because uh, these guys will set seed here shortly. And uh, you want to make sure that there's some nice litter and some nice organic matter yeah found some real nice adult ramps here and as I started to uncover them I started to notice and I do not like to harvest when they're in this stage these guys are starting to throw out uh, their flowers and these flowers will turn into seed pods so uh, I'll just cover these guys back up and let them do That's their the thing whole... yeah. you can see there's another Those one there yep Yep, there's a few immature ones in there, but we'll just leave that little patch alone. These are uh, pheasant tails. Um, you can see they're, they mainly grow, well, I think exclusively grow on dead wood, um, bark and non-bark trees. And uh, these are pretty old ones. 
Um, these are extremely fibrous mushrooms when they get older and the closer to the tree that they are. Um, but the great thing with these mushrooms is you can take and basically cut the outside of the gills off where these are still nice and tender. And you can tell when you're cutting them when they start getting hard. You know, like that little guy underneath will be nice and tender. Um, but you want to just rinse these well, wash them, clean them real good. And then anything that's not real tender, I'll take and dehydrate, and it makes amazing mushroom stock. Okay. Amazing mushroom stock. The gill pattern, these have already started to drop spores because you see the, how they're really opened up. Oh, yeah. And if you get closer up to the edge, they haven't started to drop spores. So, uh, so now you're assured that there are spores on this log. Okay. Extremely delicious. It's an old, old Appalachian staple uh, in the springtime. Um, most of the time it's boiled twice. Uh, there is poke salad. You can cook it like regular greens, collard greens. Um, obviously you can see we scored a bunch of ramps um, and a ton of pheasant tails. Um, but this is great. I mean, you get out and you get to enjoy these beautiful woods and pastures and it's something amazing that you can bring your kids out here and teach them how to forage. Um, sustainably uh, mm -hmm. to where it uh, it then um, hopefully their next generation they can pass this thing this thing on to them and their children can come out and forage for these delicious wild edibles This is how it started with the menu for today. As we said, what all do we have that's available? We had some foraged items. And then we wrote everything out on a big board. And then we kind of just connected the dots. And that's where we kind of came to the idea that the pliable egg yolk with the spicy copa, that's a good find on, on a food truck for $6. Uh, we got spring spring onion uh, polenta cake fried in duck fat topped with uh, spicy copa asparagus just came up this week from a local farm uh, and a rhubarb vinaigrette live egg yolk on top. It's pretty money for six bucks. We've done all sorts of different things in the past with ramps, so just to do something goofy with them. And as you can see, it's like it's a cream. And basically, first I made basically a pesto with uh, the ramps, spring onions, green garlic, pecorino romano, and then I folded that into some really good uh, sour cream, seasoned it up, and I'm serving with these kale chips, uh, cannabis, uh, fry, fried, we only fry an extra virgin olive oil, a little sea salt, cracked peppers, herbs. That's all there is to it. Simple. Just everything that's. Right now, it's awesome. 